and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's talk about the number one most important skill you need if you want to be a successful indie game developer. With this skill you have a chance to find success, and without it you are guaranteed to fail. Now I don't like videos where they tease the answer to keep you watching until the end, so here it is, the number one skill is marketing. But do keep watching to know why that is the most important skill. And in this video I will also give you some helpful links on how you can start learning indie game marketing, as well as some metrics for you to track and a checklist to follow to have the best chance of finding success with your games. Now if you are a game developer you might be upset to hear that marketing is the most important skill, you might be thinking, oh I really just want to make games, I don't like working on marketing, and I get that, but regardless of how you feel about it, this really is the most important skill. Nowadays we live in what is called an attention economy, attention is really the most valuable resource, that is why the goal of platforms like YouTube and Facebook, their goal is to keep you on the site for as long as possible, it's because your attention has value. It's also why a company like Netflix says their biggest competitor is not movie studios but rather games like Fortnite. There's a million things competing for your attention and more importantly for the attention of your players. Marketing is simply the study of attention and how to get it, that is why it's an extremely important skill that you absolutely need to learn. Now let me also clarify what I mean by most important, here I'm talking in the context of wanting to become a professional indie game developer, meaning that you want to make a living from making games, you want to make games that sell and turn a profit so you can keep making more games and keep this as your job. But on the other hand, if your goal is to make games simply as a hobby, just for fun, then for that marketing is much less important, but it's still pretty important since even if you're doing it as a hobby, I'm guessing you still want people to play your games. So regardless of your goal, you're still going to need to attract attention. And as soon as some people hear that they should do marketing, some people go straight into the default answer, which is, oh, I don't worry about it, a good game just sells itself. So let me tell you right away, that is absolutely not true. The quality bar is really high nowadays, being good is not good enough, having a good game is the absolute bare minimum requirement. There are tons of games coming out that are really good, but without marketing then people simply don't know about them so they never sell. So a great game that no one knows about will not sell itself. If you are a regular on this channel then you know I do a top 10 list of the best new games released every month. Finding games for that list is pretty easy, there's tons of awesome new games every single month, the tricky part is really cutting it down to just 10. And every time I make one of those videos I see tons of games that look really cool but have almost no sales. For example look at this game that came out a few months ago, it looks like a very well made retro shooter, it's got a nice art style, lots of effects and it's a relatively popular genre, and the reviews it received are indeed positive. So this looks like a great game, but based on the reviews and using the box letter method, which means you multiply the reviews by between 20 and 70, so around 40, with 50 reviews we can assume this game sold around 2000 copies, which at this price point of $10 means only about 10k gross revenue, which after Steam's cut, any refunds or chargebacks and taxes, after all of that it might be just about 8k net. Now maybe if the developer lives in a place with a really low cost of living, or maybe if this game was made insanely fast in something like under 3 months, in that case maybe it's not such a horrible number, but regardless of that, based on the quality of the game, you would definitely assume a better result. So the question is why did this one not find success? I'm going to mention some metrics you can track in a bit, the main ones being followers and wishlists. If you go to SteamDB, you can see that this game had just 300 followers before release, so probably only around a thousand wishlists. That means very few people knew about the game, even fewer were notified when the game was released, and even fewer then picked it up, which in turn means it was buried on Steam under thousands of other games. By the way, if you're the developer of this game, please don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying the game is bad, quite the opposite. From looking at the trailer and the reviews, it seems like a great game and I believe with some good marketing it would have sold much much better. And I didn't just cherry pick one specific game to make my point, you can go browse the Steam new release list and see for yourself just how many games look great but don't even have 50 reviews. And just like I mentioned in those top 10 new releases videos, the reason why I do those is so I can keep up to date with what's coming out and see what is finding success, so researching those games and doing those videos is a way for me personally to keep studying and learning about marketing so that my future games have a better chance to find success. Also another example, one of the reasons why I started this channel was specifically to tackle this problem. I was studying Steam more and more and I learned that discoverability was really only getting harder and harder. If I wanted to find success with my games, I could not rely on Steam finding the players for me. 
Steam will only help you sell your game if you can prove that your game can sell. Meaning that if you don't get that initial amount of sales, then your game will simply be lost in a sea of thousands of other games. But if you do make that initial push, then Steam will do the rest. If you take the effort to do some marketing and you get some people excited for your game and get them to pick it up on day one, if you do that, the Steam algorithm will see your game is getting sales, which in turn will promote it to more and more people, leading to more and more sales. So one of the reasons why I started this channel was for marketing reasons, so that I could gather an audience by sharing my knowledge with some useful videos. Then hopefully that audience would pick up my games whenever I release them, and by selling a bunch of copies on day one, that would signal to the Steam algorithm to push the game and have a successful launch. That was my original plan, however, I must say, if you're thinking of doing the exact same thing, I would caution you to think about what type of audience you're trying to attract. For me, I enjoy learning and teaching things, so I made a tutorial channel, but it turns out that a game dev audience is very different from a game playing audience. I initially assumed that a lot of people would follow my tutorials and be curious to know where the knowledge came from, so they would then pick up my games to see them. I have a bundle on the CodeMonkey website, but in almost 4 years and over 20 million views, it's only sold maybe 500 copies. And now I definitely understand that. Personally, I'm more of a game dev than a game player, and I definitely find that I like the time to actually play games. So all of that to say, be intentional about what type of audience you want to attract. There are several people doing some more devlog content, and that type does seem to translate into sales. For example, on the top you have Denny, his devlogs are extremely entertaining, they definitely appeal to a more general game playing audience, and as such, all of his games have been massive hits. Another example is Thin Matrix, he gathered an audience over several years making devlogs, and when the game came out, it sold tons of copies, and then Steam pushed it to more and more people, making it a massive success. So using YouTube is absolutely an excellent way to do it, just make sure you target the right audience. With regards to how to learn indie game marketing, here are some very helpful links. First of all, you have the Clark Tank. This was a show made by Ryan Clark, who runs a very successful indie game company that made huge hits. They made games like Crypt of the Necrodancer and Cadence of Hyrule. The Clark Tank was a weekly show where he would go through the Steam charts and analyze why each game was doing well. He doesn't do it anymore, but you can still go watch the old episodes, there's tons of excellent info there. And he also made possibly one of the best talks of all time on how to consistently make profitable indie games. Marketing is an extremely important part of that process. And an excellent companion video all about how to analyze hooks. I would highly, highly encourage you to watch that video and study it. Marketing becomes much, much easier if your game idea has a good hook. On the other hand, if your game has no hook, or a generic hook, like it's just another generic 2D pixel platformer, in that case marketing becomes even more difficult. I can also highly recommend the newsletter Game Discover Co. It's a weekly newsletter all about indie game marketing, analyzing why some games find success, and tons of stats on how indie games are selling. Another great one for marketing is Chris Zukowski. He's got a blog with tons of useful articles and even some YouTube videos where he analyzes various store pages. I also made some videos myself a while ago on some checklists of what you should do before and after launching on Steam. Lots of the things on that checklist are all about marketing, so you can see just how important it is. So I would encourage you to study all of those sources. If you do, you will be much better off than most indie devs and greatly, greatly increase your chances of finding success. Now as to how you actually do it, there are many, many ways to do marketing. The most basic prerequisite is simply having a public Steam page. The most impactful thing in marketing is simply time. The quicker you get your Steam page up and running, the more time you have to gather wishlists. And wishlists build up over time, so the longer you have your page receiving wishlists, the better. Then, like I mentioned a while ago, one of the main ones is YouTube. If you have the right kind of personality, you can attempt the Danny style with lots of funny clips and some extreme editing. As for me, I definitely do not have that kind of personality, so that type of content would definitely not work for me. But you can also do some more chill devlogs. I made a video quite a while ago covering a bunch of devlogs. Like I mentioned, Thin Matrix is a good one. You also have Flow Studio that recently released a successful game. You have Lumber Mill and DevDog and many more. Feel free to check those out to see what style best fits you in your game. Also, it doesn't have to be just devlogs. Maybe if you have a sandbox game, you could make a channel with some funny clips or some weird than expected things that happen in your game. Remember that the goal is attention, so do whatever you can do that brings in the most attention. Another place you can do some marketing would be on Twitter. Although, in terms of results, I believe this one is quite limited. But still, you should be making some GIFs, and perhaps one of them will go viral. 
Then as you're making those GIFs, you can also post them on Imager. I think this one also has kind of lost its power nowadays, but you might get lucky and make it go viral. Then of course you have Reddit. Depending on what game you're making, you can find a subreddit specific for the audience you're looking for. For example, there's a Tycoon subreddit, there's one for turn-based strategy, or maybe you can even post in subreddits of other popular games similar to yours. But do be careful with Reddit rules, some subreddits are very strict about self-promotion. There's also TikTok. Personally, I have not explored this one yet, I'm not familiar with it, but I did hear some indies are finding quite a lot of success. Then a tried and true method, you have a mailing list. Just have a sign up form on your website, mention it whenever you mention your game and keep growing that list. Usually people who sign up to a mailing list are already pretty interested, so growing this one is very difficult, but very powerful. Another technique a lot of people have used successfully is making a free prologue. So kind of like making a free demo. If you design the demo correctly and it leaves people wanting more, then you will likely gather a nice amount of wishlists. And related to that free prologue, something more recent are the Steam festivals. I believe they have some rules on when you can submit, but if you can, definitely take advantage of it. For example, the game I mentioned a while ago, Lens Island by Flow Studio, they benefited massively from participating in the Steam festival. It's great for gathering tons and tons of wishlists, even if those then convert less than the organic wishlists. And of course, you also have paid marketing. This one will naturally depend on the funds you have available, as well as the price of your game. If you have a very cheap $5 game, it's pretty difficult to make paid marketing work. But if your game is $15 or $20, then at that point it becomes much more doable. So those are just a bunch of ways you can do some marketing. You might be thinking to yourself, okay, that sounds good, but it's way too much work. So again, let me remind you that the alternative to doing no marketing is getting no sales. So either you put in the work or you have a guaranteed failure. Sadly, that's a reality whether you like it or not. As for metrics, specifically on Steam, there's some you should track. Like I've already mentioned, the most important one is wishlists. Wishlists are one of the ways that the Steam algorithm learns that your game is popular. The more wishlists you have at launch, the more Steam will promote your game. And everyone who wishlists will receive a notification when your game launches. Then the more those wishlists convert, the more Steam promotes your game further and further. Another one related to it are followers. These are people who click on the follow button on your store page. It means they will receive notifications of any announcements you post. So followers are kind of like super wishlists. As for specific numbers, naturally higher is better. You should aim for at the very least having around 1500 followers and 5000 wishlists. If you've been working on your game for many years and you genuinely believe in its quality and you're under that number, in that case I would honestly delay the launch and focus hard on marketing until you achieve those. You only get one launch, it's nearly impossible to come back after a bad one. There were some reports, although I don't think they've been confirmed, that Steam has some sort of bar at around 10,000 wishlists, meaning that if you get that much you will automatically get much more visibility on the launch. Again, not sure if that's a fact or just a rumor, but regardless, more is better. So yes, the number one most important skill if you want to be a successful indie game developer is indeed marketing. Regardless of how you feel about that, it is simply the reality. If you refuse to do it, then your game will most likely be a flop. So do work hard to make your game as best as it can be, but also work hard to actually tell lots of people about it. This one is a really important topic, so I'm really glad I made this video. I'm happy you made it to the end, and I really, really hope this information helps you make your game a huge success. Now go ahead and hit the like button so more people can find this video and help those people not waste their time by ignoring marketing. Alright, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.